40, a volume of 0.800 liters of a two times sent to the negative fourth molarity barium nitrate BANO32 solution is added to 0.200 liters of five times sent to the negative fourth molarity of lithium sul sulfate Li2SO4. Does barium sulfate BASO4 precipitate? Explain your answer. Okay, so I'm going to explain the answer talking throughout the whole video. So it's mostly going to be math, um, but basically the explanation is going to come down to this, which we'll get to in a little bit. Now, we're talking about precipitation, right? And remember, precipitation just means that we're going to form a solid. Now, precipitations only occur when what we have, the Q value, is greater than the equilibrium value. This is the break. KSP values, which I got from the back of the textbook, the KSP value, the solubility product of barium sulfate is 2.3 times 10 to the negative eighth. Now this is for saturated solutions. Equilibrium solutions are saturated, which means that basically like one drop more and you will form the precipitate. And if you have way too much, you are super saturated and definitely a precipitation will form or a precipitate will form. So we just have to find out, you know, is our value that we have dependent on the molarities that they gave us, is it going to be greater than the KSP or less than? Now let's see, we are mixing here. So this is gonna come in like different steps. Now we wanna find out if BASO4 is gonna precipitate. So what I'm gonna do here, is I'm going to, you know, write out BASO4, right? This is the compound that we're interested in, but it comes from two different parts. The barium, the BA, is coming from this compound, right? Because remember, we're mixing these two compounds. BANO32 is combining with lithium sulfate, LiSO4, to get this compound and another compound that we don't care about. This is going all the way back to basics when we did, you know, Gen Chem 1 balancing equations. So the barium is coming from the BANO32 um, compound, and the SO4 is coming from the Li2SO4. So we're going to have to somehow find out the concentrations of the individual barium from the BANO3 2 and then the SO4 from the lithium 2 SO4, right? The Li2SO4, because these are the only two that we care about. We don't even care about the, the nitrate and we don't even care about the lithium. Okay, so the question is how do we do that? Well, keep in mind that these two compounds are reacting with each other in a whole big solution. When we do that, the, the volumes are going to increase because the total volume is going to be these two numbers combined. So they're going to have new molarities than what they originally have. So we can't just assume that since I have two times 10 to the negative fourth molarity of barium, I'm going to have two times 10 to the negative fourth molarity of the BANO32 or vice versa because we're mixing. So this is where we basically do M1B1 equals M2B2. Now, just make sure that you're, you know, you're dealing with just one for each. So we could do this little trick where we say, okay, since we have only one barium in this whole BANO32, the barium ion concentration, starting off without the mixing, is the two times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. So if that's the case, I can do M1V1 equals M2V2. Remember this formula? <laughs> so the ones are what we started with and the twos are what we're ending with. The same thing for the sulfate. I can assume that since I have one Li2SO4 and there's only one SO4, the starting molarity is five times 10 to the negative fourth. So I can also use M1V1 equals M2V2. So let's work on the barium nitrate first. The initial molarity was what they told me, two times 10 to the negative fourth 
times the initial volume, which was 0 0.800. And now this is going to equal the new concentration. That's what we need to find out. So that's X times by the total volume. V2 is the total volume when we literally added or mixed 0.8 liters with 0.2 liters. So 0 0.800 plus 0 0.200. They made it easy for us. V2 is just going to be 1. So in this case, I just have to times these two together. OK. So x equals 2 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0.8. So I get 1.6. 1 1.6 1 .6 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's molarity of the barium. Okay, so we got somewhere. Let's highlight that. Because we're going to use that. We're going to put that off to the side. We'll use that a little bit later. But now let's just do it for the SO4. So the starting molarity for the SO4 was the lithium SO4, 5 times 10 to the negative fourth, 5 times 10 to the negative fourth times its initial volume, which was 0 0.200, equals the final volume, that's what we're trying to solve for, times the total volume. When we added both volumes together, that was 1. So it's just, you know, times by those two numbers. So 5 times 10 to the negative fourth times 0.2. So x equals 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's now the numerality of just the sulfate because it was a 1 to 1 in the beginning. OK. So now let's take all this information. And actually, I guess I'll take the v2 as well. Let's throw this on this side. Beautiful. Now we have the starting amounts, but now I just need a balanced equation, right? That's the compound, barium sulfate, right? Let's write out what this is now going to be doing in terms of KSP. Ba, SO4, this is a solid, dissolves into its two ions, which is the Ba2+, plus, and that's aqueous because it's a charge, plus the SO4 minus. SO4 2 minus, sulfate is always a negative 2 charge. It's balanced already. And now I'm just going to add the values that I had. For the barium, I have 1.6 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. And for the sulfate ion, I had 1 times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. From these values, I'm going to find a QSP. I don't know if I'm at equilibrium. That's why I call it a Q value. We could be at equilibrium, but let's just see. QSP, it's the same as just any KSP equation. It's just equal to the two products. So this would be Ba2 plus times SO4 2 minus. We just stated that the barium is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative fourth. And the SO4 is 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. So let's see what we get. QSP equals 1.6 times 10 to the negative fourth times 1 times 10 to the negative fourth. Let's see. I'll put it down here. QSP equals. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 4 times 1 times 10 to the negative 4th. It should be the same number to the negative 8th. Yep, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 8th. OK, so now if I know that I have a QSP value, I'm just going to compare it to my KSP. And maybe I'll do that up top here. So my QSP was 1.6 times 10 to the negative eighth. The KSP that we had to go into the back of the textbook for, that's 2.3 times 10 to the negative eighth. Let's see which one is larger. Well, first, always look for your exponents, right? They could be different. 
But since they're the same, don't look at the exponents. All we got to do is just look at the top numbers. Figure which one is bigger. So in this case, 2.3 is larger than 1.6. So the QSP is less than the KSP or the KSP is greater. So in this case, where it didn't reach the threshold, where we're at was less than saturated. So when your QSP is less than the KSP, you're unsaturated and a precipitate will not form. So in this case, does BASO4 precipitate? No, because QSP, which is, you know, the number that we found was less than the KSP. And then all the math to basically get to that answer. But that's it. Wahoo. <laughs> What'd you think? I really hope this helped. This one was a crazy one, but we're getting now down to the nitty gritty. So they should get a little bit challenging, but we got this. All right. I really hope this helped you out. Uh, if you can help us out, press the subscribe button and tell your friends, tell your classmates about the school channel. We're almost at 20,000 subscribers and it's all because of you guys. So thank you so much. Let's keep rocking and rolling and I will talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye.